Hi, uh, my name is Chelsea Gu. I am a associate professor in psychiatry and neuroscience and also the director for the Center for Computational Psychiatry here at Mount Sinai. Hi, my name is Daniela Schiller. I'm a professor of uh, psychiatry and neuroscience here at Mount Sinai. We um, first thought about developing games to measure social interaction because uh, social interactions are inherently very engaging and should be fun, right? Just as what we do in real life. So we uh, developed two games to, uh, to try to measure that or quantify social interactions uh, in kind of a very interactive and uh, fun um, environment. So there are two games. The first one is called uh, The Journey and that's uh, developed by Danielle's lab. And then the second one is called uh, Hardball and that's a game to measure how people perceive fairness and social influence. So what we mostly wanted is to create games that are very naturalistic, that feels like free life, um, because usually we do experiments that are uh, in a laboratory setting, which is uh, uh, very constricting. So we created this game that people will feel like they behave naturally and we could measure their behavior while they play the game. So when people play the games, they interact with different characters and what we measure is their decisions, how they behave with the different characters. Uh, we hope that they behave as if they would in real life. And we capture kind of their patterns or their dynamics and tendency when they interact with other people. So we also have a few surveys that uh, measure different mental health sort of, uh, symptoms. Uh, broadly speaking, we are interested in uh, measuring mood um, and anxiety um, and behavioral uh, compulsions and impulsivity um, and a few other uh, mental health symptoms that we think are very common in the general population and also very highly relevant uh, to social uh, behaviors. Our general assumption, uh, we know that loneliness um, is uh, hurtful, damaging for well-being. Um, so we measure people's diverse degrees of well-being, how they feel, uh, their different traits, and see how it relates to their social behavior. We are trying to understand the relationship between our social behaviors and perceptions uh, to our mental health. I think throughout the COVID pandemic, the impact of social isolation on mental health has never been more clear. Um, and we also know that having positive social relationships in one's life is very, very beneficial for our uh, mental health. So. Um, Typically, the way to study these relationships is through laboratory-based paradigms, and that's how we actually started these uh, projects many years ago. Um, however, throughout this, uh, again, throughout this pandemic, we felt this urgent need to really bring uh, the entire population, right, everybody, uh, to our study and to allow our, you know, people to behave again, in a very naturalistic setting. Um, and that not only give us behaviors and also uh, mental health data that are closer to reality, but also creates a massive data set, right? That is beyond the scope of a traditional laboratory study, which usually only has, you know, 20 or 30 subjects. So we are really hoping that we get to collect uh, tens of thousands of uh, people's behaviors and mental health data here through this app to allow us uh, to really use big data approach and computational modeling uh, to better understand and quantify mental health. In a laboratory setting, usually you recruit a small group of people, somewhere around you know, 20, 30, but that's a local group in uh, the area of your lab. But for social uh, interactions and understanding social behavior, it's very important to, to examine various uh, cultural and situational and contextual uh, effects on their behavior. So it was particularly important to go big and try to sample a really huge data set. This is a 
social dysfunction uh, across psychiatric disorders. It, it almost accompanies every disorder, for example, after a, a trauma, it affects social relationships. Uh, when you have obsessions and compulsions, it's very hard for you to uh, function with a, a group of people. Anxiety uh, limits your interactions. These are just a few examples. Um, so through these games, we can measure social behavior across psychiatric populations and across uh, a large scale of individual differences. Well, we covered the part where, you know, how our study is different from laboratory studies. Uh, right, because we are going to have a much more inclusive and representative sample uh, compared to typical laboratory studies. But one thing I want to add is there are um, actually a few apps uh, that already exist that try to measure the relationship between decision making and mental health. Um, and the I think the unique attribute of our app is that we are the first one to really uh, focus on social behavior. And again, you know, the importance of measuring that I think is very clear at the moment. Um, I think the human brain is social by design. We know humans are a social species. That's why. All of our problems are probably caused by social factors to start with, but also can be recovered and, uh, you know, uh, improved uh, by social support, right? This is really the ultimate reason why we wanted to do this study. Another uh, consideration is that usually in laboratory settings, the experiments are uh, very artificial. Uh, and that's a major disadvantage when you try to learn something about social relationships. Uh, here with these games, uh, although it's still a game with fictional characters, but it has a very real life feel uh, and you do naturally see, uh, kind of, you do naturally interact with the character as if you would do with uh, anybody on your phone. Um, so with that allows us uh, to measure something that is uh, more similar to real life. One thing that uh, the app may give us um, is a uh, a measure, you, a way to quantify and to characterize people's social behavior. Uh, we can give that as a feedback to people who play it or patients if they undergo treatment. And then they have something that they can see. They can look at their behavior, how it looks before and after, and track the progress. The primary issue is really providing a quantity, something that can quantify that very complex behavior. I think it started, you know, in 2019. Um, and through a long journey, which involves COVID, <laughs> but kind of, you know, again, I think further proves our point that uh, social interactions really is essential to mental health. Um, and we're just really glad that it's finally out uh, and is able to see the world. And we really hope everyone will download the app and really enjoy playing it. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, fun designing the games. Uh, it was a, a large group of uh, students and trainees, um, and it was fun to come up with the scenarios and the characters. Uh, each person came with, with their own insight about social relationships. And overall, we really just wanted it to be fun and engaging, and something that people would want to do, uh, and along the way, learn something about themselves.